Good morning and welcome to the Bulwark Podcast. I'm Charlie Sykes. I know this is going to be a good podcast because I'm already through my fourth page of notes. I keep, you know, making the notes of what I want to talk to our guest about, and then I tear it up because I think we're not going to get to that. There is just so much that I want to talk with you about. Kara Swisher, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Charlie. For those of you not familiar, Kara Swisher has a new podcast on with Kara Swisher. She is the co-host of The Pivot Podcast, an editor-at-large of New York Magazine, former host of the Sway and Recode Decode Podcast, and she's described as Silicon Valley's most feared and well-liked journalist. Well, first of all, you don't usually see those words in the same yeah, sentence. Yeah, that, was just, that, that yeah. was just a headline. That was just a headline. They're just trying to make some, I don't know if I'm that well-liked or feared. I, well, maybe I'm a little feared, I suppose. Well, okay, that, that's an interesting question because you, you are a legendary interviewer. And, yes. I, and I caught you down in Austin at the Texas Tribune Festival interviewing Hillary Clinton. And, and afterwards, mm-hmm. you were asked about your approach to interviewing and you said something along the lines of that kind of the key was that you don't care whether you ever interview them again. Right. Yes, that is correct. That okay. Is correct. So is that liberating? Is that um, like, okay, I'm just going to ask you what I want. I'm going to just go at it. Yes, that's exactly it. It's not to be mean to them. It's not like I feel like beating up on them because a lot of people I've had round and round after like Elon Musk keep coming back for more. Like they keep wanting to talk and stuff like that. And so it's not so much that I, I think a lot of reporters, look, I was a beat reporter. I get it. There's an, an, a level of push you can give to the people you're covering, right? It's a little, and that's my problem with, you know, it's it's called access journalism, but it really is just beat reporting. And you have to, to maintain a long relationship or you get frozen out. Now, sometimes when I've got and over the years, it seemed to me that every time I got frozen out, I did better work. Like with Yahoo, for example, they wouldn't talk to me for a while. But ultimately, people inside, if you're doing great reporting, will work with you. You know, not not the, necessarily the top people, but you don't necessarily need access to do a good job. Um, that's my that was my whole thing. And so my when I'm doing when I said that, it's like I'm going to ask what I want to ask, and they don't want to talk to me next time. That's their business. But I'm not going to change what I want to ask because of that. Well, that's, that's a big issue, and that's a real challenge, this whole question sure. of access journalism. Anybody who's been a beat reporter understands that push and pull that in order to get your scoops, in order to get the stories, the mm-hmm. inside thing, you, you need to cultivate sources. You, you need sure. to have people who return your phone calls, which means that there is the suspicion that some mm-hmm. reporters might pull their punches. Yeah, sure. I mean, and, and, that, and that's become very, very controversial. Well, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's the parsing of words again. It's access yeah. journalism versus beat reporting. There's just, you have to have a relationship. Now, sometimes you just don't have to, you know, you actually don't. See, if you're covering the White House, you kind of do because you can't get in, right? You can't physically get in and they can keep you out. But I think in a lot of cases, you don't need to be quite as, um, if you're a good, you have to be a good reporter, first of all. If you're not, you you're screwed. You do, you do have to do sort of the, the game that people play. But I don't, I, I think the word access is sort of this sort of dirty word, like act as if they're going to trade something away. I don't think most reporters do that. Now, look, Sean Hannity's text aside to President Trump, that's, yeah. I don't know what even that is. That's, it's not even access. It's that, and he's not a journalist, that's, right? I forgot. That's, that's I forgot. tongue bath journalism. Yeah, right. Yeah. No. Or no, it's, he just wants to be in power. That's very different. Right. And that's just a whole different new, it's not a new fresh thing. A lot of journalists used to do that. You know, Kennedy had a number of journalists around him that were giving him advice and stuff. So it's not a fresh new idea. I think the issue is that I think about is I'm going to ask what I'm going to ask. And if they don't like me, well, too bad. There's just, and that, that'll be my problem. And I, I always find a way to get in. I feel like I'm like water, like I'll, I'll eventually get in <laughs> rot, and rot your floorboards. <laughs> So where, where do you where do you come down on the Maggie Haberman wars? I tweeted yeah, out a, a co- I got a copy yeah. of her book, which is yeah. which is out today, and I yep. said, hey, in the mail, and mm-hmm. I would say that two thirds to three quarters of the response were people, I'm never going to buy that book because she uh-huh. sold out. She wasn't tough enough on Trump. Which yeah. I am very puzzled by this. Mm-hmm. Where do you come down on this? Since we're talking about quote unquote access journalism. I'm about to uh, interview Maggie, actually, for the podcast today. Um, of course. And uh, I've known her for a long time, and I consider her a friend. Um, so I'm going to say that at the top, obviously. But, uh, you know, she, a couple of things with her is she's a beat reporter, and she's covering the person everyone has a feeling about, right? Whether you love her, because the people on the right hate her, too. Like, she's too mean to him, right? And he writes all these weird texts and emails about her, you know, uh, you know these twit tweets, and now it's whatever truths about her. Um, and so 
in her case, I don't think you win whatsoever when you're covering the most controversial person on the planet, really. You know, I don't, I can't think of someone more controversial. So everyone thinks you're either being too tough on them or being too acquiescent. Um, I think, I think for some people, the very act of speaking to him is a problem, right? And then what do you do? And I I was listening to some of the clips of the interviews. I thought she did an actually a good job when she, when he was talking about the TV thing, for example. Now someone could listen to that and say, why doesn't she challenge him? And it's like, it's an interview where you're just trying to draw him out. She's not trying to, and she goes, okay, she doesn't agree with him. She's like, okay. And then she pushes again. She's like, so you didn't watch TV? Because she wants to get it on the record that he's lying, right? That's what she's doing there. And and so I, I was watching the response. I'm like, do you know what she's doing? She's not actually agreeing with him. And so I think one of the problems that Maggie has is she's she's literally covering the most hated and reviled and also beloved, depending on where you're sitting, person. And there's no winning in that case. Secondly, I don't think that I see a lot of that commentary around the men that cover him exactly the same way. I just don't. You know what I mean? She's become some sort of something, a lightning rod for people. Yeah, very much so. But gosh, you know, Bob Woodward, Bob Woodward could get a pushback for keeping stuff. The third thing is, they've been very clear, the editors decide. She brings them news things and they decide, And but she still gets the blame. And so I think it's a, I think it's super complex. I wouldn't know quite how to cover that beat in a way that's correct. And so, you know, she's done enormous amounts of very devastating reporting, but she doesn't get credit for that. But whenever she does something like, maybe looks like, you know, you can, I can see who the sources are. Most people can guess. Like there's, so every now and then you're like, oh, look, Jared talked to her, right? Like you could just tell, right. or Ivanka. Like, I think everyone in Washington practices that. So I'm not really clear why we're jumping on her particularly in general uh, for it, except that she's the most prominent person. I, so, I, that, that's what I was going to say. It's just simply mm-hmm. because she is the most prominent. So in your new podcast last week, you talked with Chris Cuomo. So what was, what was that like? And by the way, I'm going to be just as tough on on Maggie on this stuff okay. as I was on Chris Cuomo. Okay, so I'm going to yeah. press her for it. But I do understand what she's doing because I was a beat reporter. So I understand the dynamics of that. Oh, Chris so Cuomo, so what about him? So is Chris Cuomo ever going to come back on your podcast? <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I think he will. I think he will. I think he okay. kind of like, he, he was, I think he was relieved to be like pressed like that. Like, oh, finally, someone just says it out loud. Like, this is a shitty ethical thing I did. Um, to my face, to my face. And I think a lot of people, that one thing that does bother me, and he did have a very good point, is everyone loved it until they hated it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I bet he didn't get much pushback within CNN. Yeah. to what he was doing, like, right? And so his one thing that I thought was super weak was if I knew there'd be a grudge and I kept saying, well, what about the thing itself? Not the, the reaction. So you do it no matter what. And if you didn't get pushback, you'd think it was a great thing. You know, I he didn't have a point of view on whether what he did was wrong or not, the actual thing versus the reaction. So that was interesting to yeah, me. Yeah, I don't think the Cuomo's uh, uh, do that sort of thing. Okay, so he, uh, he, he, I, he did not have any regrets. Let me yeah, just say, you can yeah. hear it in his voice. He he wanted to say, <sighs> you know, I I I called the code red. You remember that? I called. Yeah, from, yeah. Uh, I called the code red, Kara. I did it. Uh, so yeah, you, you, you'd you'd love to hear him and Andrew sit around and talk about you know how unfair the world is to them. Okay, so yeah. I want I want to talk about uh, Elon Musk. Sure. I want to talk about uh, Elon Musk and Twitter. Elon Musk's mm-hmm. uh, text messages, what they show. Elon yeah. Musk, international man of diplomacy, with his suggestions <laughs> about uh, Ukraine. I, I want to talk about Peter Thiel, Thiel, um, Thiel. you know Thiel, Peter Thiel, and his sure. activism in the midterm elections. But we have to start with this story. We have to start okay. with the the Herschel Walker story, which. You sort of always knew we were going to get to this moment where Herschel Walker um, comes into this race with so much baggage and Mitch McConnell and the other Republicans say, we we can deal with that. Well, we're we're Mm -hmm. going to find out whether nothing matters. I think nothing matters. Chapter 879, Uh, Mm -hmm. this Daily Beast report suggesting that he uh, paid for one of his girlfriend's abortions. They have the receipts. He is denying it vigorously. He is saying he's going to sue the Daily Beast for defamation. But the real problem seems to be his son, Christian Mm -hmm. Walker, who is something of a social media 
TikTok star. How would you describe yeah. uh, Christian Walker? I mean, he's he's kind of big uh, on social media, right? Is he, or is he just loud? Is he? I'm just asking. I, I don't <laughs> I know. I don't think I, he's big. I, I think I he's he, he makes. He's a, going a, to be. A, you know, he's he makes a spectacle of himself. I don't think he's particularly. He, he basically yells at liberals. That's mo- his thing. I've followed him a while. You know, as I told you earlier, the gays have been fully aware of Christian Walker. You know what he was doing. Um, he's just he's just one of these screamers. There's lots of them. You know, here's my point of view. He's he's somewhat entertaining, I guess, if you go in for that kind of stuff. He does this sort of yelling into the camera thing about yeah. what it's usually liberal. It's usually, um, and it's often, uh, you know, it's sort of like, hello, psychology in real time. Like, well, let's, like, let's yeah. get a taste of this because, sure. uh, yes, yesterday there was a lot of focus on his tweets where he says, I don't care about somebody who had a bad past and takes accountability, but how dare you lie and act as though you're some mm-hmm. moral Christian upright man. You've lived a life of destroying, there's a lot of all caps here of destroying mm-hmm. other people's lives. How dare you? And he Mm -hmm. says every family member of Herschel Walker asked him not to run for office because we all knew some of his past, every single one. He decided to give us the middle finger, air out all of his dirty laundry in public Mm -hmm. while simultaneously lying about it. And uh, this morning, um, the hits just keep coming. He posted this to TikTok. Here's it. it, it, we, We just slightly edited it down, but I think you'll get a flavor of Christian Walker on TikTok this morning. I stayed silent as the atrocities committed against my mom were downplayed. I stayed silent when it came out that my father, Herschel Walker, had all these random kids across the country, none of whom he raised. And you know my favorite issue to talk about is father absence. Surprise, because it affected me. That's why I talk about it all the time, because it affected me. Family values people, he has four kids, four different women, wasn't in the house raising one of them. He was out having sex with other women. Do you care about family values? I was silent lie after lie after lie. The abortion card drops yesterday. It's literally his handwriting in the card. They say they have receipts, whatever. He gets on Twitter. He lies about it. Okay, I'm done. Done. Everything has been a lie. And so for the right to say I'm being suspicious for saying, hey, I'm, I'm done with the lies, when you all have been calling me saying, is this true about your dad? Gosh, we're not going to win Georgia, this candidate all. That's been you. You have no idea what I've been through in my life. You have no idea what me and my mom have survived. We could have ended this on day one. We haven't. I haven't told any stories. I'm just saying, don't lie. Don't lie on my mom. Don't lie on me. Don't lie on the lives you've destroyed and act like you're some moral family man. Y'all should care about that, conservatives. And then for people on the left to act as though I'm responsible for all of the things that he has done. I've talked about Father Epps. I've talked all these issues because they've been close to me, because they matter to me, because I went through it. That's why I've talked about it. So when you say, well, talk about your dad, I am. I'm saying this behavior is atrocious. Don't come for me. You don't have to like my politics. You don't have to like me. You don't have to. I'm just saying I'm done with the lies. Oh, okay, well, Kara. <laughs> that, that young man needs a hug. As I, as a mother oh. for that young man needs a big, big hug for an extended period of time. Obviously, he does talk about father issues. If you follow him, he, mm-hmm. you know, and of course, it's not even veiled. I mean, it's a constant, and you know who exactly who he's talking about. He seems, I, I wouldn't say obsessed with it. He's con- he he talks about absent fathers almost every other couple of scream fests he does. And that's what, that's his tone, right? You know, he has a lot of feels and in your face, that kind of stuff. And, you know, unfortunately in a lot of ways is that these social media tools provide us with the inside of families, like yeah. right there. And, and the, and the people who want, who aren't being heard by their parents, in this case, Herschel Walker, this is the way he's talking to him in a lot of weird ways. And, You know, he's also very, he wants to be a celebrity. There's that element of that. He used to live in Los Angeles. I think he lives in Florida now uh, because he went on about a harangue about California and poop on the streets for a while there, Mm -hmm. Um, which is, you know, a tip, whatever. Okay, fine. Then you should move. But it's really, I don't know how damaging it is because they'll say he's he's allowed, he's gay, but although he says he's not gay, but he says he sleeps with men. I, I don't even understand what's going on. So they'll try to minimize that he's crazy, I suspect you know, sort of like a Mary Trump kind of thing. So this, I guess this is the question of whether this makes a a difference. Um, it, obviously, the National Republican Party is uh, all in on Herschel Walker. Uh, they doubled down again this morning saying they're going to aggressively fund him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Erickson, 
who I think was never Herschel. And then, of course, uh, is is now, well, maybe Herschel or mm-hmm. yes, rah, rah, Herschel is having some buyer's remorse. And he uh, mm-hmm. tweeted last night, I'd largely thought that Walker could pull this off despite his baggage. I'll see what sort of response um, he mounts. But given the text messages tonight with Georgia Republicans, Georgia GOPers, are mm-hmm. praying for Dr. Oz to win. Walker hasn't <laughs> mounted a good response to any attack, and this is brutal, probably a KO. And then he then he followed up on that, saying one notable thing here, and I think this is very revealing. It's mm-hmm. not the Daily Beast story that's gotten Georgia Republican types into despair mode. It's not the fact that he paid for an abortion. Mm-hmm. It's Herschel Walker's son's Twitter thread yeah. <laughs> that served yeah. as the admission against interest for Walker, and it's all downhill from there. So I, I guess, you know, the... The conventional take this morning is everybody's going, well, it's going to be Access Hollywood all over again. People mm-hmm. are going to be all upset about it, but then they're going to yeah. take a deep breath. They're stuck with him and they'll yeah. rally around. What do you think? Sure. Yes, of course. Because By the way, they knew this from the start. So let's not pretend like, oh, my goodness, you're kidding. This guy is a liar. Like, I'm sorry. I mean, there, there are liars and everyone lies. But boy, this guy is sort of the the Olympic champion of it. And um and so I think he's just this. They knew that this was the case. I'm sure they knew there was an abortion. I'm sure they knew. They, I'm sure there's worse, even worse. And they just don't care. They want to win this seat. And cynically, because sort of they had other better candidates, right, go, to, to go up against Reverend mm-hmm. Warnock. But they decided not to because they're in the thrall of, of Donald Trump. And, and you know, it's sort of a ride or die kind of thing. And in this case, possibly die, right? Like in this kind of thing. And so they, they're so cynical. If they, if they, if, if they win with this, they're just as fine as, you know, and if they lose, they can just blame him and all this baggage. Yeah, no, I think, um, I think that's exactly right. And of course, it's, it's, ironic, it's ironic that Mitch McConnell, you know, who's complained about uh, bad mm-hmm. candidate quality, was actually one of the guys that you know, rolled over and said, OK, why, why not Herschel Walker? Well, I guess we have the yeah. answer to all of that. Well, you know, rolled over is like the party motto, right? Let's talk about. Elon Musk, one of mm-hmm. your favorite guys, and I'm, I must admit that I am obsessed. So I guess the um, the really in-depth question that I have for you on uh, his deep thoughts on Russia and Ukraine, uh, Kara, mm. is what the fuck? Well, what, what, what is going on? I mean, he was, he's, he's weighing in on so, Twitter with his own Elon Musk peace yeah. plan, you know, yeah. re, redo elections, Crimea formerly part of Russia, Ukraine's going to remain neutral, water supply to Crimea is assured, whatever they mean. So, yeah, you know, yeah. the, 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 this four part plan did get a pretty explicit fuck off from Ukraine's ambassador to Germany. <laughs> yeah, it did. But I, you know what? Uh, OK, <laughs> OK. He just he, he also mouths off on like he puts poems up. I just think a lot of people get everything he says out of his mouth. Maybe it's like just some guy sitting in a bar doing this. So it just happens to be Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, or maybe oh, yeah, not, so, not the richest today. What do you care what he thinks about the Ukraine? I don't know. What Was it something going to happen? Is suddenly, is suddenly the Secretary of State going to go, ah, finally, a plan. Thank goodness Elon Musk weighed in. I mean, I think he's very much, you know, styles himself after uh, Stark Industries. That, that Iron, Man. Iron Man. Iron yeah, Man. I think yeah. he just does it. And so he just does it. One, I think he's doing it as a distraction because he, he, the man loves attention. Let's be clear. He loves attention. He loves you know, shit posting. He loves causing controversy. It's one of his pleasures. It's one, you know, it's what the, his release valves. And so he just, whatever he wants to weigh in on, whether it's, you know, Biden yeah. is mean to me or, you know, what, or, or I'm going to be a right winger. That lasted for a New York minute. Like, okay, sure. You think it matters. It doesn't matter what he thinks of Ukraine. There's no way he's going to influence anything. And well, he's just running his mouth. He, he, what? I mean, the, the, the guy is the richest man in the world. So, and he, he, he and, may, uh, I mean, like tomorrow he may own Twitter. Yeah. Okay. So, so that maybe that matters. Yeah. No, no. Twitter is a very small business, shitty business, right? In both the left and the right media over index, the power of it, it doesn't, it, it, it worked for Donald Trump for sure. It was a very powerful medium, but in general, I don't think there's going to be any repercussions. Look, he's caught in a de- in th- two weeks or less than two weeks. He's got to go to court. And he's going to lose a battle, probably. Most people feel. Um, I th- I think he's going to lose. Um, and, and so and one, they'll make him buy Twitter. Well, they'll something. I don't know if they'll make him buy Twitter. He's either going to have to, you know, not buy it and hand over some dough. The difference between what he offered for it and what it's worth right now, or he's going to have to buy it, or he's going to have to keep. In court, it's not going to work. He's not. He's going to lose, no matter what. I'm going to stick with with what makes this guy tick. He's the richest man sure. in the world. He has all of these amazing companies. 
Um, and so why is he not content with building Teslas and sending large rocket penises into space? Jeff Bezos what, has what, the penis rocket. Well, Let's try to keep that straight. They're all penis rockets. Yes, true. <laughs> so where, but the one who that actually looks like a penis <laughs> no, is Jeff Bezos, is the most depictive of that. He so did some, Jeff Bezos do that because he was trying to compare himself with Elon? I mean, what, what is I, going on with these guys? Well, that's an interesting all the, story. It's like, does every billionaire have to become a 12-year-old boy again? It's like, you go, I have a gazillion uh, dollars. I want to be a 12-year-old boy. Hey, hey, you said have to become? Do you yeah. think they're not that? Like, they've already, <laughs> they don't have to become they that. Are, um, you know, here's the deal. He he really is interested in rocketry. A lot of a lot of people are, you yeah. know, not just boys, but girls. And, yeah. um, and so is Jeff. Jeff has always been interested in space since I've known him. Um, and so he's got the money. And so what's he going to do, buy a sports team? How boring, right? Yeah. Or, or Pierre Omidyar, who started eBay, at one time, he's like, do I have to buy a sports team now? I hate sports. So he bought a hotel <laughs> chain, right? And so what do you do with all that money? You can give it away like Bill Gates is trying to do. Um, or or you could do you buy a yacht. How many yachts can you buy? How many planes can you buy? These people have wealth that's obscene. It's an obscene amount of wealth. And so I think, one, they do have a rivalry, 100%. I had Elon on stage two years ago, I guess, where all he did is make penis rocket jokes the whole time against Jeff Bezos, which is what he, it amuses him. And in the case of- Oh, it amuses um, me too, so. Yes, it amuses I guess, him. I guess and, this is me being a 12-year-old boy. But I think Elon really does behind all of this. You know, in a lot of ways, he reminds me a little bit of Kanye West. You can't ignore Kanye West's brilliance in terms of music and everything else. If you if you step away from all the crazy stuff he says, he's quite the artist, right? He is. But he, he is he, crazy. Matter, he's he's mentally challenged, yeah. I think. That's yeah. is a nicer way of putting it. But <laughs> yeah. um, And he does. He has definite issues. You could, I, I'm not a doctor, but you could see he's struggling with mental illness. So I think Elon has this part of him that I love, which is the visionary part. I think what he's done around SpaceX is really astonishing. Landing a, a rocket on a platform in the Pacific no, that, or whatever. That, that, is, that is Astonishing. Uh, Tesla, astonishing. It would be enough for most yes, people. Yes, but it's not. He's a restless... Um, I would say, speaking of daddy issues, there's very clear daddy issues there. Walter Isaacs, and I know, is working on a, has been spending a lot of time with him working on his uh, a mm -hmm. book about him mm -hmm. and has been with him. And I think there is going to be a big daddy issue section, would be my guess. His father, as you saw, he also was having many children at a late age, very tumultuous childhood, brilliant. And so restless. Also, a bit of Asperger. I mean, you could see it there uh, if you spend time with him. I don't know if he's diagnosed. He's talked about mental illness also. He's talked about being bipolar. I don't know if he's been diagnosed. He himself has said that. And so I think he's just a restless person. And some of it manifests in wonderful things. And when he's in a cycle, many people close to him have told me this, when he's in a cycle of manicness, he gets like this. This is what he does. And so I don't know. I, I don't really care what he thinks of Ukraine. I think it's okay. a distraction from Twitter. What's what's about to happen to him, which is going to have to hand over billions of dollars. Well, let's his. let's let's talk about this case in in Delaware because last mm -hmm. week they had to release hundreds of pages of these text messages yeah. and emails to and from Musk. And you know, Charlie Warzel wrote about this in the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. He said that what's so illuminating is how unimpressive, unimaginative, and sycophantic the powerful men in Musk's oh. contact appear to be. He quotes mm -hmm. one social media executive who tells him. Everyone looks so fucking dumb. There's no strategic thought or analysis, just emotional yeah. and done without any real care. So what was your take? I mean, you deal with these guys all the time to sort of see well, this varnish behind the behind the oh, curtain. And it's like, well, whoa. I, I, what I said is welcome to my fucking world. Like, this is what they're like. I've seen this. I know what they're like. They make decisions emotionally. They make them without thinking, without due diligence. I've talked about this over and over about Facebook. They're like, why did they do that? I said, do you think they thought about it? You think they th are behind the scenes with their yeah. brilliance and thinking about it. They don't think about it. They don't. They're, they are careless people you know, from the Great Gatsby, like Tom and Daisy, they're careless. They don't care what they break. And so I don't mean they're always malevolent, not always. They just are careless. Many years ago, when I was covering Facebook, they showed me Facebook Live for the first time. And I said, well, what happens if a bully gets it or someone who's a killer who wants to shoot people and broadcast it live? And they're like, you're a bummer, Kara. And I'm like, oh my God, you didn't think of it, right? You didn't think of it, did you? And so I think in a lot of ways, you know, Elon is the same way. This, you know, that and the people around him. First of all, he's the world's richest man. So a lot of people want to be get on his boat or plane or train or whatever. Secondly, they can benefit from him. One of the things I've talked to him about 
he, he didn't like something I said. And I said, I don't work for you. I said, I don't get money from you. The most I get is an interview. And that's pretty much it. That's, and I, I'm very clear that I want that. And, and I, so I said, so in a lot of ways, I'm your best friend because I'm, not, I'm telling you the truth about stuff. And we often get into beefs about that because of it. Uh, over time, we've had periods where we don't speak to each other. And so I think these people have to lick him up and down all day. They have to tell him he's right. And actually, what I was really struck by, and again, this is the Elon I do know, he was quite like, please stop doing that. No, thank He was very controlled in those texts, very much so, um, and very reasonable. And that's the Elon I like better. You, you could see that. He doesn't come off looking bad all these sycophants do. One of the things that kind of shook me was, you know, any residual faith you have in, you know, capitalism or the wisdom mm -hmm. of these, you know, business executives, you know, you constantly yeah. hear this drumbeat, you know, if we, we need more businessmen in government or people who would run government like yeah. business. And then you look at Larry Ellison, the CEO of Oracle, yeah. big, big <laughs> deal, who's, yeah. you know, you know, expressing interest in being part of a Twitter deal. And so Musk asks him, so roughly what dollar size, and this is the text from, from the CEO of Oracle, mm -hmm. a billion or whatever you recommend, whatever. it would be lots of fun. And then Musk yeah. responds, whatever works for you, I'd recommend maybe 2 billion or more. And then Ellison responds, well, since you think I should come in for at least 2 billion, I'm in for 2 billion. So, okay, that was a, that's a lot one. of money just being thrown around by text yeah. messages and like, does not appear there was a lot of due diligence. No, you know, none. Between no. the two. And then you get the- I would the, say none. What's less than none? Less than none. No. Yeah. Well, look, at, look. if you and I were like, can you give me a hundred bucks? Yeah, sure. Whatever. whatever. I yeah. guess, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. I'm starting a bar. Oh, here's a thousand bucks. Like, you know what I mean? That's what it's like with these people. And they don't do, do Sam Bankman Freed, I was sort of surprised because he's somewhat of a thoughtful person. He's a, he has a crypto exchange, FTX. And he was like, uh, he'll fly out there and then he'll give you 5 billion. I mean, that's what they're like. That's what they're like. That's how they make decisions on the fly. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't. They make dozens of them and one of them always works, right? So it doesn't really matter if the other 11 suck. I, I mean, that's really how they think about it. So since we are in this era in which we have, um, I mean, I, I, I do feel at some point that we live in a society where we have this handful of billionaires who just have this mm -hmm. outsized impact and of course, we can't call them oligarchs because that's what, mm -hmm. that's oh, that was only in Russia. Oh, let's, but let's start. But, yeah. <laughs> no, so let, let let's start with let's talk about Peter Thiel. Yeah. So CNBC the other day reported that uh, Thiel has told his deep pocketed political network that he's done helping J.D. Vance, who he thinks mm -hmm. is going to win in Ohio. I mean, he's raising money for Blake Masters. He's he's all over the place. He's got his fingers mm -hmm. in this year's midterms in a rather extraordinary way. So mm -hmm. you know the guy. What's yeah. making him tick? And w w where do you think this goes? Because we're at this moment where we think of the 1890s where, you know, guys would sit mm -hmm. back and, you know, smoke their they cigars and decide who yeah. is going to sit in the United States Senate. Well, now we have these Silicon Valley guys who go, yeah, I'd like this dweeb J.D. Vance to be a United States senator mm -hmm. and I can make that mm -hmm. happen and, and mm -hmm. may just make it happen. And then he goes, well, I can make Blake Masters a senator in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what's Peter Thiel up to? Well, uh, you know, uh, he, of course, he's been interested in politics since he's been in college. I mean, this guy has been very politically oriented. He also doesn't like government. He sort of wants to burn it all down. Um, I, I used to talk to him. He doesn't talk to me anymore because I did just that. I asked him exactly the questions and he's way too smart to answer them at this point. There's no winning for him talking to me, for example. But in the time I did spend with him, there's a great video of he and I arguing for 15 minutes <laughs> on the internet um, uh, about a wide variety of things. And he didn't like it. You know, he didn't like it. He, and he's, again, he's quite brilliant in, in many ways. But, I have, but a little thin-skinned? Uh, very thin skin. Yeah. And and that's okay. It's not thin skinned. He's just smart. He's like, what do I need this bullshit? For? What do I need to talk to this lesbian for? Um, and, you know, that's how he makes calculations. Others are, are more like, maybe I'll need her later. Maybe she could hurt me. He, he thinks he, I can't. Um, and so fine, whatever. But in, in his case, I think he's been very political from the beginning. He's been very conservative. He also is gay. There was a big case about that, as you recall. I think he wants to be politically relevant. And so, and he has the means and money to do so, whether it's suing Gawker out of existence, which he did, or doing kind of this. And so he, he wants to put people into government that will minimize government. He's like the ultimate, he doesn't just like conservatives are like less government, right? He hates government. He doesn't want any government. He thinks uh, the capitalism is the way to go for everything. And if you read his books, you should read, there's, they're mm -hmm. quite fascinating and 
he's quite brilliant. And so you read them and you're like, oh, that's the problem. Just read his books. He says what he wants to do. Like he does it over and over again. And so it's not surprising that he finds candidates and applies money to them, just like he would an investment. And some of them work out. Like he had a lot of bad investments and then he had Facebook. So it hardly mattered, right? And so Masters looks like a pretty bad investment. Vance is a pretty bad investment. Probably we'll see if that'll work. But he certainly should be winning a lot more. I, mean, I would say it's a failure because he's not killing it, right? He's not he's not dominating, um, largely because a lot of the stupid things that come out of his mouth. By the way, I met him many years ago when he, this was not the person I met. I, he's changed rather drastically. Yeah, this is the before times J.D. Vance. Yeah, I talked yeah, to Steve yeah. Case about that recently, and it's coming out in a podcast. But who, he worked for Steve Case, and let me just tell you, I don't know who that person is, the, the person who's speaking. But whatever, people evolve into whatever they want to evolve into. And so I think I think he's being very smart. He's like, I'm going to put my money behind certain people and see what works. And then after that, he has a lot of influence. If he gets them in a place, they certainly owe him, right, on some oh, level. Yeah. And so, you know, he wants to get the people with the mentality that he has, which is that get the government out of the way and by any means necessary, including election denial. But but is that is that really what J.D. Vance is running on? I, you know, I, I'm hearing all of these national conservatives who are saying we ought to use the power of government to reward our friends, punish our enemies. Well, they're going to uh, do break, that. Break down the wall between church and state, which is weird to have yeah. coming from a candidate supported by Peter Thiel. Right? Yes, but he's he, he doesn't care. You you, you okay. imagine that he has that's like, the white oh, noise. Wait, no. wait. Oh, that's hypocritical. You think they t- think for a minute? No, the goal is to have power. That really is the goal. Yeah, and so, by any means necessary, is how these people think, and they they think that way in business too. Like, look. Facebook isn't really bathing itself in glory over how it's managed its business, is it? You know, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. I did. That's where we, we, me and a lot of the Facebook people, I'm like, don't you care the impact? And they don't. They don't care. They absolutely, he did for sure. And he, and he thinks it's overblown. He'll say that. I've seen, I've seen him talk about that and, and that it'll sort itself out and capitalism will sort itself out. And I don't think he cares about collateral damage. So if you're sitting in a room with the Facebook people or, or folks like this and you say, this mm-hmm. is really bad, this is destroying the fabric of our culture mm-hmm. and democracy, what do they look at you like, like you're the... Oh, uh, please, Kara, you're being dramatic. Oh, come on. It'll work itself out. Well, I'm like, yeah, I guess it will to your advantage. And, you know, I, I look, he, he, at least Peter Thiel, and I do think he's quite brilliant, is honest about what he says. He says it out loud. He doesn't mm-hmm. say that's not what he wants. And a lot of them sort of like, you'll hear like, we're trying to change the world. Whenever I hear that, I'm like, oh no, no, please don't. Um, we're trying to make the world better. You know, Facebook was full of those bromides that are just, you know, endless bullshit, but, um, you know, they want to grow at all costs. And, and you start to, you have to really study these people like Mark Zuckerberg, do you know who is, I mean, it's well known, but do you know who his hero is? Who the, His historical hero? No. It's Augustus Caesar. Augustus Caesar. Now, I'm a very good student of history. I know Augustus Caesar did bring on Pax Romana, but it came at an enormous cost. And Mark would prefer yeah. to focus on Pax Romana versus all the dead people. So, you know. Yeah, and, and, and the end of the Republic, et cetera. That is correct. So, you know, Peter Thiel may be honest, but he's also willing to lie to advance his agenda in terms of the election denial, right? So, but again, that's just a, a means to an end. That's just whatever yes, whatever it takes. So Whatever you know. it takes. Like, you know, is that so different from Lee Atwater talking about Willie Horton and putting that out? They knew. Well, he you was, he I mean? was he, but he was a professional hatchet man. That's correct. Right. So why do, why do you imagine these are any different? They they will. Who cares is what I think they're operating like. Once we get to power, that's all that matters. And I think they don't care. That, that's the problem with the left. They're like, can you believe? Often, often, often with the left, which drives me nuts. It's like, can you believe they're doing that? I'm like, yeah, I can believe it. Like it's same thing with Trump. Can you believe he stole these documents? <laughs> yes, I believe it. Yes. Like, are, are you, you not been paying, paying attention? attention right? That's correct. And so you, you sit there, and that's a real problem on the left. Like all this righteous indignation. Stop it. They're like this. Like, guess what? You're, these people. This is how they are. Stop being shocked and surprised by a, a grab for power and start actually shoving back. I, I don't even understand why anyone's surprised that Trump does. Well, you mentioned something in, in passing that I think was, is, is a big story, but perhaps it's underappreciated, particularly in the, with the question of where does Peter Thiel go in the future? Mm-hmm. One of his great accomplishments um, was to drive Gawker out of business by financing mm-hmm. this massive 
lawsuit. And you know that, you know, I mean, on the right, there is this sort of, you know, every once in a while, there's the, you know, Justice Thomas has suggested that we mm-hmm. repeal protections against uh, libel law, right? You know, New York yeah, versus Sullivan that. and everything. So clearly, in his mind, the Absolutely. I can use my power to destroy media outlets mm-hmm. or critics out there that I don't like or that I yes. think have hurt me. Yeah. Yeah. Someone was recently like, why didn't you do Substack and make a lot of money? I said, you think I'm going out in the savannah with those people? They'll just sue me. (laughs) Are you kidding? I'm staying back here in the trees. You know, that's what I think. They're like, they couldn't do that to you. I'm like, oh, no, they could like ruin me financially if I get anywhere where I'm exposed like that. I was like, and they're like, are you scared? I'm like, I'm not scared of them. I just understand the environment we live in. Look, the issue I had with that, he can have a problem with Gawker or whatever. And lots of people sue. Trump just sued CNN today, whatever, whenever that's going to go nowhere fast. Um, but still, it's nuisance. It's a nuisance for CNN. It's costly. It's, and they have the money, I guess, but still, uh, most people don't. And so one of the things that I think about is like, in that lawsuit, I don't mind that he sued him, but I mind that he did it secretly, right? Like mm-hmm. if he so matters, if he so is angry Peter at Thiel, me, financing yes, if these, it's so yeah, wrong right. what they did, then come out into the light and say what you're doing. That's my issue with that, the secretiveness of it, that he was the funder of it. And later, he only came out of the dark when he won right? If he had lost, you'd never know it was him. And they also didn't have to do all of it. Like they took down the whole company. And so that's how they think. It's like, the, you know, scorched earth. Do you think that they'll come after you someday? I don't know. No, probably not. I'm not going to be anywhere where they're going to be able to. Well, see, <laughs> the, the reason I, I bring this up is because, you know, I, I can imagine five years from now having this conversation, people going, hey, can you actually believe that they're trying to put all these media outlets out of business, that they're, you know, pick, I'm not surprised. They're, pick, they're picking off the low hanging fruit that anybody that says anything. Correct. And, and the reality is anybody in the media knows that you don't have to win a lawsuit like this mm-hmm. to do a lot yeah. of damage. You just 100%. file the lawsuit. You can bleed them dry if you're not the New York Times or the Washington yeah. Post or CNN. You, you can bleed, you know, smaller outfits or That's individuals correct. if you were out in the Savannah, bleed you dry just on the legal bills. And, mm-hmm. and I, I think they've been signaling for some time that, that that's going to that's coming. And yet I think it's going to come as a shock when people realize, hey, when Donald Trump sues, how much is he asking for from CNN? Like four hundred and fifty billion dollars or something like that. Yeah, he's incompetent. He's inco- like yeah. here's the, if you, directionally, this is where it's going. He That's happens right. to be incompetent, right. Right? right? Same thing with the stealing of the documents or whatever he does. It's always like, oh, well, that's the direction. But boy, is he an idiot the way he's. Same thing. Like the TikTok stuff was really interesting. Um, directionally, that's the way it's going executionally, he's always executionally incompetent. And so, but you, I pay a lot of attention to the direction, you know, I think of that's what, a good what point. they're doing. So um, on Peter Thiel, I think the most interesting story about Thiel is the uh, new conservative dating app called The no. Right Stuff. <laughs> uh, it only allows for heterosexual dating, which I don't know, did you yeah. find that interesting? I, I just, don't I, care. I don't, it's, you know, it's, again, left goes into a tizzy. I don't care. Go for it, boys. Let's enjoy yourselves. I hope you have many children. That's what I think. About. But it's invite only at the moment. And yeah. th- there's actresses okay. um, in, in an ad for the site are bemoaning the state yeah. of modern masculinity. And yeah, and yeah. apparently they're looking for alpha males who Please, want children. What? And apparently you, you have to answer like a little survey, like yeah. what did you think about January 6th? Then I mean, yeah. what, what, what is this? Why is he doing I this? I, because he's just tweaking <laughs> liberals and whatever. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, he doesn't care. It's a, it's a, it's a comma. It's like a, it's a nothing burger for them. And so they're just doing it for attention. They're doing it to just drive people crazy. Maybe it's a business. Who knows? Like none of these, none of these right wing uh, social media sites have done particularly well, right? In fact, you know, true social rhymes itself into a wall every five minutes. From from a financial point of view, but you know, if they scream loud enough, it'll attract attention. I don't care. I, there's J Date. You know, you ever see the J Date ads? Are my favorite. Oh, they had a really good ad about finding people. So whatever. There's a farmers one. There's a cowboys one. I think it's the wonder of modern technology. Okay, I don't so care. here's something that I find a little bit puzzling. Maybe it's just uh, need to have to disaggregate it all. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about tech's influence on the midterms, and you know, the mm-hmm. outsized influence they have. And yet right now, one of the hot button issues on the right is going after big tech, the uh, yeah, the loathing for of. big tech and Republicans who claim that we get back into power and we're coming for you. So how is this playing out in Silicon Valley? How does Silicon Valley see the political landscape and the possibility of significant um, ideological blowback? 
I think they're coming for their money, for donations. That's what they're coming for. You know, I, I've been told Kevin McCarthy's meeting with all of them saying, if you get back in power, we'll be able to, you know, most of the the stuff that's regulatory is from Amy Klobuchar and others, including with Chuck Grassley, that antitrust bill. But it's been mostly bipartisan, but the right has a real obsession with the censorship issue. So they're just, and it's good for the base, I guess. And they keep banging on that drum that they're, my favorite part is Josh Hawley saying that he's been censored when he never shuts up. Um, that's always a <laughs> There's pleasure. a lot of that. I'm like, yeah. wow, you never yeah. shut up. How is it that you've been censored? You have plenty of places to talk. Um, it's called the web. The web, you can go on any time. It's this free thing that the government invented. All they're interested in is this is a power center they don't control. So they'll seek to control it, but they don't mind it being there. I'll tell you that. They don't mind it being there at all. And they're rich people. So, hey, money, that kind of thing. Can we be paid off for not attacking you? I think it's mostly an election thing. And in some cases, some people do really think, and I agree in that regard. Look, I thought Trump should be thrown off Twitter. I wrote about it Mm -hmm. a long time ago. But I don't love that two people made the decision to throw him off Facebook and Twitter. I don't love that. That's really problematic. And so I I, I don't quite know how to figure it out. I just think it's very much a problem of concentration of power. And that's any Democrat Republican should be concerned with the concentration of power among a very few group of people and a very small, very small group of companies. And that should be the concern. Of course, it's not. It's a screamy political issue. You know, every time Ted Cruz opens his mouth, one of the more incompetent politicians in modern life, and just says things just to be, you know, just to see the reaction. He doesn't care about actually figuring out how to reign in power and legislate these powerful companies in a correct way, because they are the most powerful companies in history. There is no legislation governing them. There's no privacy bills. There's no antitrust bills. There's no agency. Everyone has an agency, the FAA, the FCC, the, you know what I mean? Not tech. Hmm. And think about that. Think about that. And then the FTC is underwhelmed, under-resourced. And so is, so are all the SEC, all of them, the SEC, the FTC. And even though you don't like big government, they're outgunned by these people in terms of lawyers and lobbyists and everything else. And so 